Hey guys, Chaos here, and today's video I'm going to be going over every single weapon you can use on Kujo Sara. The ones that are good, the ones that are not that good. So if you do end up enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and try to hit a thousand subs. And hey, maybe this will be a Welkin giveaway, maybe, I don't know, wink wink, I didn't say anything. But uh, yeah, let's get right into the video. Alright, so the first weapon is going to be the Messenger. This weapon has pretty low base attack, it's crit damage, which is good. And charge attacks hits on weak points, deal an additional 100% attack. Damage as crit damage can only occur once every 10 seconds. This bow will be fine since you will be charge attacking with Kujo Sara, but she's mostly going to be a support character, so this weapon isn't going to be that good. But if you don't have any other weapons, this weapon could be a good option because of the crit damage stats and the pretty high base attack for a 3 star weapon. And here are the essential materials if you do want to level it up. Next we got the Raven Boat. This boat is not going to be that great for um, Kujo Sar. It has low base attack, it has elemental mastery which is not that great, and it has uh, increased damage against opponents affected by Hydro or Pyro. So this weapon is not really going to benefit you at all. But if you do end up leveling up this weapon, here are the essential materials. Next we got the Recurve Bow, another bad weapon you can use on Kujo Sar. It has really low base attack, it has HP which won't benefit you at all. And defeating an opponent restores 8 HP. This is also a horrible bow, do not use it, but if you do end up using it, here are the essential materials. Next we have the Sharpshooter's Oath, one of the better weapons that you can use on Kujusara as a 3 star. It has low base attack, which is fine. Uh, it has crit damage, which is really good, and then increases damage against weak spots by 24%. So this bow will be good if you are running a DPS Kujusara and you are using charge attacks. As you can see, you get a nice amount of crit damage, you get 46.9. And the low base attack is... it's bad, but like, it's fine for a 3 star, so here are the essential materials. Next we have the slingshot. This boat, like a lot of the time, is going to be the best 3 star weapon you can use on Kujo Sara. It has bad base attack, which is fine, but it gives up. Uh, it gives us some nice crit rate, which is really good. And then if a normal charge attack hits an opponent within 0.3 seconds of being fired, increase the damage by 36%. Otherwise, it decreases damage by 10%. So th with this bow, you want to be up, up and close with the enemies and shooting them up close. And then you'll get that nice 36% bonus. And if you do have refinements, because 3 star weapons are usually easy to get, you'll get 60% more damage, which is really good. It makes up for the low base attack. So if you do end up leveling up this weapon, the essential materials. Now we're getting into the four stars and the first one which is probably one of her best weapons, the Stringless. This weapon is going to be great on Kujo Sara. It has pretty okay base attack. It's elemental mastery which is fine but if you are running a elemental reaction comp this can be useful and the passive is just insane. It increases elemental skill and elemental burst damage by 24%. So this weapon is basically going to be like the catch and the weapon we got in 1.2, the festering desire. So this weapon will be pretty good if you're running a support Kujo Sara or even a burst DPS one. So uh, if you do end up wanting to build this weapon, here are the stats you will get and here are the essential materials. Next up we have the Alley Hunter. This weapon is going to be pretty good for Ball. Not Ball, uh, Kujo Sara. Uh, the base attack is pretty decent actually. It gives you attack percent also, which is good for uh, Kujo Sara because her ability is to scale on attack. And the passive is, while the character equipped with this weapon is not on the party, their damage increases by 2% every second up to a max of 20%. And when the character is off-field for more than 4 seconds, they start to uh, gradually decrease their damage buff. So what, this weapon is going to be good for a support Kudo Sara, because while you're off-field doing damage with your DPS, this uh, passive is going to be stacking up. And then you could probably just switch to Kudo Sara. Perform your abilities really quick with the high base attack and the secondary stat, which will give you a bunch more attack. You can just perform your attacks really quick and then just swap off and then start to regain the buff again. If you do want to level this up, uh, here are the uh, stats. As you can see, you get some pretty decent attack. And here are the essential materials. Next up, we got a classic, the Blackleaf Orbo. The Blackleaf series is usually a great choice to go for as an F2P. Uh, it has good base attack, it has crit damage, which is really good, and the passive is also good. It has an attack increase by 12% for 30 seconds after killing an enemy and can stack 3 times. This weapon will be good as a DPS uh, Kujusara. So uh, here are the stats, you get some pretty decent crit damage and you get a nice amount of crit, uh, base attack. And uh, here are the essential materials if you do decide to grab this weapon. Next up we got the Compound Bow. This weapon has uh, pretty low base attack for a 4 star. It has physical damage which is fine if you're running a normal attack DPS Kujo Sara. The passive ability is also going to be good if you're running a 
uh, physical DPS Kujus are, and even it benefits some charge attacks if you want to do them every now and then to uh, get your buff. And uh, here are the stats, the base attack as you can see is pretty low, and the physical damage is uh, you get 69%, which is nice. And uh, here are the essential materials if you do decide to level this up. Next up we got the Favonius Wormo. This weapon will be really good for a support Kujosar, especially if you're running the 4-piece Emblem of Seven Fates set. You get some pretty okay base attack, but it's it's kind of low for a 4-star. You get Energy Recharge, which is great if you're running 4-piece Emblem. And uh, also she will need some Energy Recharge because her burst uh, costs 80. But if you are running Kujosar with Ball, this uh, you won't really need the Energy Recharge, but this will help. Because uh, you'll get to get your uh, burst more, so you can... Uh, you know, uh, get more stacks on your ball. Uh, the passive is great, crit hits uh, have a 60% chance to generate a small amount of particles, which will be useful especially if you're running her with the Electro DPS. So you'll basically just get a lot of particles, and uh, if you're running Emblem of Severed Fate, you get a bunch more uh, attack, not attack, uh, burst damage with the set bonus, and here are the stats, as you can see, you get 61 energy recharge and 454 base attack, which is pretty low. But it makes up for it with the uh, bonus uh, passive ability and the energy recharge which is pretty high and here are the essential materials. Next up we got the second craftable weapon. This one is probably going to be the best for a charge shot DPS Kujo Sara. You get pretty okay base attack, you get attack percent which is great. And then you get charge attack hits on weak opponents. Uh, charge attack hits on weak points, uh, increase movement speed by 10% and attack by 36%. This is great. Uh, it's a really good passive. And uh, here are the stats, as you can see, you get a lot of attack from this weapon, here are the essential materials. Next up we got the second shop weapon, the Royal Bow. This weapon gives you a base attack, which is good. Secondary stats, attack percent, which is also good. But the passive is not that great, it basically just gives you a lot of crit rate. Which is fine if you don't have any crit rate, but the Blackcliff weapon is going to be better, as in with all the other characters. The Blackcliff series is usually just better than the Royal series. But uh, yeah, you, if, you, if you do get this weapon, it is fine, because you get some decent base attack and attack percent if you're running a support Kujosara, and the crit rate can be fine if you know, you're know you not building your Kujosara that well as your other DPSs, because she's your support, and you shouldn't really focus on supports that much when you're in the beginning of the game. But if you do decide to get this weapon instead of the Black Cliff, uh, here are the essential materials. Next up, we got Rust, which is going to be really good for a physical a DPS Kujosara. You get attack. You get pretty decent attack, you get attack percent, which is great, and you get more normal attack damage. So, uh, this weapon also has a decreased charge attack damage, so when you do do your E, and then you do your charge attack to get the buff, uh, it won't give you that much damage, but it is fine, uh, since you are running a physical DPS if you're using this weapon. Uh, as you can see, the attack is really good, you get 510 attack and 41% attack percent. And then, uh, yeah, this is a pretty good weapon for physical Kujosara, and uh, here are the essential materials. Next up, we got another really good bow for Kujosara, especially if you're running her as support with Emblem of Third Fate. You get pretty high attack for energy recharge weapon, you get energy recharge, which is great. And the passive ability, uh, basically it resets your elemental skill, it has a 40% chance to do it every 30 seconds. So basically you can get your buff constantly. Like you can pretty much always have your attack percent buff that you get with Kujus RSE. Uh, as you can see it has high base attack, it gives you 30 energy recharge which is good, and the uh, the passive can give you more particles. So if you do decide to build this weapon here are the essential materials. Next up we have the BP uh, weapon, the Viridescent Hunt. This weapon is going to be fine, it has 42 attack which is pretty good. It has crit rate which is also pretty good. And then upon hit, normal aim attacks, basically they have a chance to generate a cyclone, which basically groups up the enemies. This can be fine if you're using your uh, Kujosara as like a DPS and you want to group them up and then do your reverse. So uh, this weapon can be fine, but there is better uh, weapons you can get from the uh, weapon banner and just the banners. And also some craftable ones that could be better if you're running a DPS Kujosara. But here are these stats if you do want to build this weapon, here are the essential materials. Next up we got the Windbloom Ode, this is going to be another good DPS uh, weapon for Kujosara. You get pretty okay base attack, you get Elemental Mastery which is fine if you're running like a, uh, a reaction comp with like Sing Cho or Shang Ling. And then the passive is after using an Elemental Skill you get a buff which increases your attack for 16 seconds. Which can be good, like it increases your attack which yeah like it could buff your E but you would have already used your E to get this buff. 
So unless if you're like, and this only lasts for six seconds, so it won't, it won't benefit you that much unless you're running a uh, DPS Kujasara. But if you do want to build this weapon, uh, here are the uh, stats and here are the essential materials. And this weapon was a event weapon, so here are the refinement levels and uh, the buffs you can. Next up, you got the Minor Noct Waltz. This is the uh, Official weapon, Kujasar is basically a, a new official because, you know, Electro, bow user, bird. And uh, so basically you got some pretty decent attack, you got physical damage bonus, and you get a normal attack and a, a elemental skill buff. This weapon is going to be good if you're running a DPS Kujasara, especially a physical DPS one, because it will buff your physical DPS with your normal attacks and also your charge attacks when you do apply your E. So this bow will be an all-around good DPS option. Here are the stats and here are the essential materials. Next up we got the final craftable weapon and 4 star weapon, the Hama Yumi. This is the one we just got in Inazuma after you open uh, 7 chests at the Seashell House over at Tatarasuna. The stats are fine. You get 41 attack, which is not that good, but it makes up for it with the attack percent. As you can see here, you get an insane amount of attack percent. You get 55.1%, which is really good. And then the passive just buffs your normal and charge attack damage. And uh, once you reach your burst, it, it doubles by... it basically doubles. But the thing is with this weapon, unless if you're running Emblem of Severed Fate, uh, you won't be getting to that 100% that much. But if you're running Emblem of Severed Fate, you probably have a bunch of energy recharge already just to get the uh, four-piece buff off. So if you do decide to build this weapon, here are the essential materials. Next up, we got the uh, five-star weapons. The first weapon, which is going to be the Skyward Heart. This weapon is probably going to be on the Ball Weapon banner. So if you do end up wishing for the Engulfing Lightning uh, Ball's main weapon, uh, you can use this weapon on Kujasar, and it will actually be pretty good. It has insane base attack, it has curry, which is good, and it gives you crit damage and a small little AoE physical damage uh, buff. So this weapon is going to be really good for a DPS Kujasar, or even just a support Kujasar, because you get a lot of attack, you crit rate and crit damage, so it'll be fine to balance out your stats if you got uh, bad RNG on the artifacts. So uh, here are these stats, as you can see, 674 attack, 292 crit rate, great, and you also get the 20 crit damage from here. Here are the essential materials if you do decide to build this weapon. Next up we got the Amogus Bow. This weapon will be pretty good uh, for uh, DPS Kudosara, as you get pretty good base attack, you get attack percent, which is also great. And then the passive basically just buffs your normal and charge attack damage. And uh, after a normal or charge attack is fired, damage increases by a further 8% every 0.1 seconds the arrows in the air for up to 5 times, so basically you can get like around 40% more damage. So this weapon is going to be pretty good for a DPS Kudrasara. Uh, as you can see, you get some pretty good attack. You get also attack percent, which is also going to be beneficial. And here are the essential materials. Next up, we have the Elegy for the end. This weapon will be fine if you're running like Emblem of Severed Fate, but I don't recommend this weapon. This weapon is mainly just meant for Benti. Uh, it, ha it gives you base attack, which is it gives you a pretty decent amount. It gives you energy recharge, which is also pretty good. As you can see here, you get 55, which is great. And then the passive basically just increases your elemental mastery and attack percent by a bit. Like it's it's a fine buff, but it's mainly meant for like Venti. I don't see any other characters that will use this weapon other than maybe like Fischl. I don't know. I'm not really a fan of this weapon because the passive is kind of just like it's meant for Venti. So uh, if you do decide to wield this weapon though, here are the essential materials that you will need to get. The final 5 star weapon is going to be the Thundering Pulse, the one we have right now with the Oimiya banner. This weapon is going to be really, really good if you're running a, uh, a DPS Kujasara. You get a lot of base attack, you get crit damage, and the uh, passive just increases your attack and normal attack damage by a lot. The final weapon we're going to be going over is the free weapon we are getting on PlayStation. Uh, this weapon won't work if you are on any other device that's on PlayStation. This is the Aloy weapon, you get pretty good attack, I mean actually it's not that good. You get attack percent which makes up for the low attack, and the buff increases cryo damage. Don't use this weapon, it's meant for Aloy, it's not really good on any other character apart from like, I don't know, maybe Ganyu. But uh, yeah, if you're on Playstation and you just started the game and you don't have any bows, I guess you could use this because of the high base attack and attack percent. If you do decide to level this weapon, you have the essential materials. Alright, so that was basically the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, please, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs, and we're getting pretty close to it. Actually, we're at 300. We've gotten like 200 in a month, which is great. Please subscribe. We have like 2% of my viewers are subscribed, which is a very sad number. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, please subscribe. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.